Welcome to another edition of uh, Lee's Open Mic. Now, today, our very special guest, Ron Sexton, who some of you guys are probably going to know as soon as I say the name Donnie Baker. But Ron's one of the more, maybe the most talented guy in radio and has become one of the best in stand-up as well. And he joins us today. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, thank you, Lee, so much. I appreciate it. Let me uh, give you a sample of uh, Ron's work. I think you'll love what he's doing because he's creating this world-dominating space on Facebook. Here's a little bit of uh, Donnie Baker. Hey, man, this is Donnie Baker with a few words to the Chicago Cubs. Congratulations. I know it took you 108 years. That's almost a full century of pain and struggle, and I can say we're late to your redemption because my Uncle Sonny used to run Riverside Arcade and Bowling Alley, and Dennis and Wayne and them you know, knew that I had the high score this close for two straight years on centipedes. And when the flood hit, they unplugged everything and it went back to demo mode and erased my initials. But did I quit? So I can relate to it. In that game seven, I've never seen anything like it. It was back and forth. For extra innings, nonstop back and forth, back and forth. One second, there's a Trump ad, then here comes a Hillary ad. Then Trump counters again. And just when you thought it was safe, Joe Buck started talking. <laughs> Uh, okay, Ron, the the creative process for Donnie, where'd that character come from? Uh, actually, when I called into Bob and Tom, uh, when I first started with Bob and Tom, I would do celebrity impressions. Yeah. Uh, it was Dr. Phil, and then I had an original character, Floyd the Trucker. Love Floyd. Basically the only two that, that I had at that time. So I wanted to have a character that, when the phone rang, people couldn't tell if it was a real caller, mm -hmm. as opposed to one of the cast members on Bob and Tom calling. So I wanted Donnie, I wanted that realism to... Now, was that a request made by Tom, or did no, you just think, I, I want I had, to be able to do Yeah, I, I had been there long enough. I finally had found my comfort level where I wanted to try something new. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, it was so long ago, uh, Bob had uh, been off to his honeymoon. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. my first phone call went really well, and Tom goes, man, I, I liked what, whatever you did, we liked it. Mm -hmm. um, I hope Bob likes it when he comes back. So I was very nervous because I, I felt like I was on to something as well. So Bob comes back from his honeymoon, and the first phone call out of the box for Bob to hear it, it was dicey. It was right. hanging by a thread. Well, finally, Tom said, hey, Donnie, tell us some of those pickup lines you told us last week. Uh, uh, help Bob out, you know, since he can't use them anymore. He's married. And, and so Tom saved it, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Tom saved it because he reintroduced a bit that worked really well the, the week before, and so I was able to go into some of those same lines. But... So, th but uh, Donnie himself, is that based on somebody that oh. you knew? Where did uh, he come it's from? It's a combination of people. It's based off of uh, a couple of friends I went to high school with. I have yeah. a friend of mine, Joe Emmert, that would say, I swear to God, all the time. And he was even, <laughs> he was never aware of how often he said it. Yeah. Uh, kind of picked up on that from Joe. He, he was always the, the guy, the friend of ours, that always had a boat. If you had to sell a boat, hey, Joe, can I put my boat in your yard? <laughs> yeah, man, bring it over, man. Swear to God, you can. <laughs> so it was kind of based off, the, the boat and the swear to God was kind of based off of that. But then uh, Donnie was always that kid I was afraid of in, in high school. That the, uh, we called him Hoods when I was in high school. Yeah. That Hood, that man, don't look that Hood in the eye, man. He's gonna, he's gonna, mm -hmm. he's gonna pop you. Mm -hmm. You know. So I think part of it was just my uh, uh, disdain of just always being leery of those Hoods in school. That I was like, oh man, I, I don't want to tick off that guy yeah. in the jean jacket and the, the Leonard Skinner T-shirt because right. uh, you know he's he's a rebel. And now I'm old enough to know that he was probably as afraid of me as I was of him. And it was all up front. And, <laughs> right. and so I think it was just kind of based off of a lot of people watching, um, a couple of friends that I went to high school with, and I was able to morph that into one complete idiot. Well, it is the principal character that you do now when you travel. Yeah. And were you aware of the universality of that? Because there's so many people that know somebody like Donnie Baker. Yeah. Because, you know, all the guys I went in high school, I was in high school with, I think about I relate to that. Yeah, I think uh, early on, uh, I had uh, Donnie hit pretty hard uh, in about 2000. Yeah, so was there a eureka moment for you that um, you went, holy cow. I think when Ronda Rousey referenced one of my YouTube videos on Reddit, and then my phone would not stop blowing up, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had a YouTube video, the one that I had, I tried to coach her about how to, how to punch proper. You, you spread the thumb and the pinky, it's called a stealth fighter fist. And then when you get to her throat, you put down the landing gear. Well, uh, so then she replied to, oh, yeah, he's going to train me. I mean, she played along with it. Yeah. And it really kind of helped put my YouTube stuff on the map. That was one of those things. But uh, I think just largely knowing that uh, and traveling around and, and getting a feel that everybody works with, 
um, everybody went to school with or everybody has a friend that's basically a liar like Donnie. I mean, right. you know, the fact that he's saying, I swear to God I invented soap. Well, no, you didn't. <laughs> but he thinks by saying, I swear to God, that they're going to buy yeah. it and they'll believe it. But I think it's the same way I felt when I first saw Beavis and Butthead. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, di I can't pinpoint the exact names. But when Beavis and Butthead came about, I was like, oh, my gosh, I went to school with those guys. Yeah. I went to school with those guys. You know, the guy that every time you turn to page 69, here come the giggles. All right, man, come yeah. on. Was this third grade again? Yeah. And then you kind of go, well, maybe it is kind of third grade <laughs> again. You know, you get it. You know, yeah. and there's a part of it that's endearing and a part of it that is, uh, um, you know, for Larry the Cable Guy, people always said, well, Larry was at his peak that the audience didn't know he was really making fun of them. Uh -huh. I think there's a smidge of that that applies to Donnie. Yeah. I think that there are some Donnies that are in the crowd when I'm doing Donnie. But I think the vast majority of the people that come to see Donnie are the people that employ the Donnies that go, oh, my God, now I finally get to right. <laughs> laugh in this guy's face. Yeah. You know, and um, so I, I think the two are similar in that way. But there's an endearment there as well. I mean, it's not, uh, yeah, you're making fun of that yeah. guy, but it's done out of an affection, I yeah. think, too. It's not completely Correct. acerbic. Well, Donnie is a survivor. I mean, look, yeah. he's, he's trapped in the 80s. He's still wearing Zubas. Uh, but he'll never admit defeat. And so yeah. I think that it's funny because I'll get a lot of comments on Facebook feeds, especially from ladies. And, oh, Donnie, I love him. Like, they're really pulling for him. They're yeah. really rooting for him because he's, <laughs> everything's a struggle. You know, yeah. he won't admit that he's defeated, right. but he, he will, the temper is there. The, the, the struggle is there, you <laughs> yeah. know. And, and so it's funny that uh, ladies really pull for Donnie. Maybe they're romanticizing the fact that, that it recalls that memory and it's yeah. safe. It's a safe space. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Back there, yeah. Donnie's a safe space yes. for a lot of people. Yes. One of the things that you do so well, better than anybody, you know, we're looking at Donnie there, is you inhabit these characters with phrases. I mean, your voice work is in just impeccable. Oh, but but it's the, the way you change the phrasing and the language and even the joke writing is completely different from character to character. I got some video. I want to show you. This is uh, Floyd the Trucker. He's <laughs> singing a little tune at a Bob and Tom appearance. I think you guys were down in the Caribbean. Some of y'all never been down to them Caribbean islands too much. Well, I'm going to tell you a story so you understand what I'm talking about. Down there we have a little critter that lives in the ocean. Kind of looks like a big old snail when you think about it. Everybody calls it a conch. Now these folks down there dig the meat out of them conchs and mix them up with some spices and peppercorn, make a salad out of it. Uh -huh. It ain't nothing like a tuna salad, but I reckon it's mighty tasty to some folks, of course. Just an old gal that lived down there in the Bahamas, and she'd go out about the evening time and fish out the mess of them conchs, use their bare hands and bare feet, and carry it home, cook it up for supper. Uh -huh. I wrote a song that explains <laughs> how I feel about it. Yeah. They call it conk salad. <laughs> Way down in the Bahamas, where the sharks and rays grow so big, <laughs> let the cow that I swear to the world made them see critters look tame. Conk salad, honey. <laughs> Shark got her granny. <laughs> Again, uh, Floyd the trucker using phraseology yeah. that is so familiar to me because I'm hearing uh, all these guys used to hang out with my grandfather. Yeah, and that's so where where's Floyd that coming from? That's is that a, it's exactly part of where Southern it, Indiana? What is that? Uh, actually, my grandmother, uh, who's still living, uh, bless her heart, she's 91, but she's from Salina, Tennessee. Okay. And so when I was a little kid, I yeah. would go to visit my grandma and grandpa in Salina, Tennessee, in the hills of Tennessee. And when my grandpa would go to, he was, you know, it was all about tobacco. And so when he would go into town or we would make that big trip into downtown and all the old men who would whittle in front of the courthouse, I think I really, for whatever reason, um, being an only child, um, uh, all the imaginary friends or voices in my head, I paid attention to a lot of that stuff on those trips yeah. down there. But that dialect, that, well, well, he's going to kick a shine when he finds out what we've done. You know, kick a shine. I'll <laughs> never forget. I didn't know if kick a shine meant that he was mad or if he's going to be happy. Yeah. But I remember the But it's the breathing, shine. too. I well, mean, the yeah. breathing, uh, yeah. he's got, you know, he's yeah. em em emphysema. Yeah. Yeah, he's a smoker. <laughs> I mean, the detail is really incredible, well, Ron. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, but it's, yeah, I think Floyd, there's something, there's some gurgle. That, yeah, there's that a bubble years, there. Years of biscuits and gravy that, that have not <laughs> quite made it down the pipe. They're still fighting. But, yeah, I, uh, I think that's, for me, that's what sells. That's, that's what I strive to do. Yeah. Uh, when I first did James Gandolfini, yeah. I was trying to go way up here, way up here, you know. And it wasn't until afterward I realized, after Sopranos was done, it's about the breathing. 
So he was always breathing, like he was on a, a treadmill, 24-7, every day. <laughs> I walk out on this treadmill with my daughter Meadow, and I earn. But uh, it wasn't until I realized, oh, it's the breathing that sells yeah. that. Right. And uh, once I conquered the breathing, it's like a puzzle. Each impression is like a puzzle. When I uh, first did Charles Barkley, I could only do one or two words. But he takes his time when he talks. And every time there's a trick at all when he talks. <laughs> and Charles, it was hard to make Charles the, the funny guy. Yeah. So I coupled him with Tony Soprano and did a, a bit for a couple of years on Bob and Tom called Belly that. Up. Yeah. And Charles was, oh, Tony, well, what's the matter today? What's the matter? Look, look, look what happened. You know, <laughs> so, so then Tony's just, you know, venting and Charles go back and forth. And it was fun. So it was good for me to uh, kind of apply different characters that I had a voice for them but not really a purpose or much material yet. I don't know if a guy, though, that could uh, have the sort of fan base you've got that are completely different subsets, for instance, with Ken Tarmac. There's not a sales guy that I don't work with that it has an affinity for Ken Tarmac, yeah. and it's because of the Zig Ziglar, the, yeah. the terminology yeah. that you're using. Yeah. I mean, it's so well invested into that world yeah. It, it is if you came from that. Wh where is that coming from? Uh, well, two parts, and that's a great question. Uh, when I traveled doing Donnie Baker doing shows, I'd never really traveled much. I didn't. I didn't like flying, but with doing Donnie and and having a family, okay, I I can't be gone for a week. I have Bob and Tom, but I can leave on a Friday morning, and be back on Sunday. So I had to fly to do that. Couldn't just drive to all these shows. So I started flying more often, and every time our flight would land, I would hey, we just landed. No shooter. I'll yeah. meet you at the Avis desk. Once Carousel 7 is hot, let's merge. You play zone on the, on the baggage claim, and I'll make sure the rental car's hot. Yeah. You know, so there was always this big, elaborate game plan. Every flight, everybody's on the phone with, who's picking you up, Carol? Okay, I'll, I'll meet you uh, off the mixer. You know, Bluetooth, now back and forth. Um, so part of it was just observing every flight. Everybody go, no, we just landed. We just landed. Coupled with, uh, I tried sales a few times in my life, and mm -hmm. I hated it. Yeah. I failed miserably at sales. And I sum up my sales career by telling, even when I told the truth, I felt like I was lying to people. Right. So, and I think that's a lot of Kenny, you know, yeah. that uh, <laughs> Kenny, so it, it's a little of my, uh, uh, oh, I guess, venom that I've, you know, had over the years for right. sales and that whole, and thank God people can do it because we have to sell, we have to buy, we have to sell, but... For Kenny, it's just that, oh man, is he just every so, every trick in the book. It's interesting that you had all this antagonistic feelings towards these yeah. characters. That's how they birth, but they end yeah. up being endearing at the end yeah, of it. Yeah, I think so. I think with Kenny, yeah, you're pulling for him. It's like, oh yeah. my God, this guy, man, how does he, what is a day like for him? I mean, how yeah. does he get through it? You know, he's a walking Red Bull. But um, yeah, because he annoys the heck out of you. But at the same time, he's so pathetic that you almost pull for him. Well, if they want to follow Donnie, go to Facebook, right? Because Donnie's yeah. got how many followers yeah, now? Yeah, we're over a half million followers that's on Facebook crazy. now. So that's great. But that's uh, crazy. yeah, my website has links to all that stuff. DonnieBaker.com is the best place yeah. to, uh, to go. It's a one-stop shop. Great to see you, Lee. Ron, appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Guys, that'll do it for this edition of Lee's Open Mic.